Hello, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another instrument review for you today. And really today is a little less of a review and more of an introduction specifically of our brand new Lake City Alto Trombone Generation 2. So a few years ago, um, I had introduced kind of the first generation of our project. At that time, it was part of our S Custom line. Um, now we've renamed it Lake City in recognition of the land of 10,000 lakes. You may have seen something on the our channel in the past about our Lake City Flugabone. Uh, we haven't really even talked about kind of our main project, which is our large bore tanner trombone, our compensating euphonium, which we'll be doing more with here. But one of my own pet projects, and frankly, one of the reasons I haven't been doing as many videos as of late, has been our alto trombone. So the whole idea with our Lake City ATB 415 alto is to have a really great introductory level alto for those players who maybe just aren't looking to invest the two to three to four thousand dollars plus in a pro level alto of which of course there are a number of fantastic options out there not everybody's looking for that so we have our gen 2 of this model we've had made some alterations really tweaks from our first model that i think have really taken this instrument to the next level so i'm going to talk about all of the changes we made here but of course i want to let you hear this instrument in action so i'm going to take a play for you then we'll talk about it afterwards i'm going to be playing all of this today on my trusty bach 7c Just as a quick reminder, the Schmidt Music Lake City line is a line of instruments and accessories where we are working directly with the manufacturers to create a premium product at a great value for our, the player. And so whether it whether we're talking about accessories um, or in this case instruments, you know, we're doing a ton of development work. I've been working on our Lake City project for Boy, going on probably five, six years at this point here. And again, the whole idea is that we are working directly with the makers. We're doing a lot of design and development work. We're getting a lot of input from major players 
people, influencers in our area and beyond to help us design and tweak these instruments. And the ATB 14415 Gen 2 is no exception. So again, the idea here was having a really great introductory level alto, whether it's for somebody looking for an alto trombone to start learning on, maybe they're looking for a backup instrument, whether it's a, you know, I've been playing trombone for a lot of years and I, I'm just interested in learning alto. But again, I may be, you know, not looking to spend that two to three to four thousand dollars for the great Yamahas and Cons and Shires and Raths and so on and so forth, all these other great options out here. And so our uh, ATB 415, you know, has a lot of the features of these really great instruments. And frankly, I think we've captured a lot of the playability of them as well. So the ATB 415 features a seven inch yellow brass bell um, with a gold brass tuning slide. Um, in our previous generation, we had offered this in both yellow brass and gold brass. We may do the gold brass again, but I personally really, really love this combination of the yellow brass and gold brass um, with it, which we'll talk about why in a second. But um, it has a nickel silver outer hand slide with nickel silver crook, very, very common with alto as well. Um, a 480 bore. Um, our previous generation had been a little bit bigger when we went back and did some tweaking, some work with our partner maker. We said, ah, you know, we want to play around a little, a little bit. We're going to open up the feel in some ways here with the bell taper, give it a little bit more heft of sound, but to balance it out, we went with just a slightly smaller bore. And I think that really does create a nice balance of all of these characteristics. So what are all these things doing for us here? So again, I really like the seven inch bell on this. Um, it's a little less traditional on some of our, you know, our more Germanic inspired instruments. And of course, some of the work S.E. Shires and some of the other folks are doing, they're typically a little bit smaller bell, but um, I really like this approach. That's one of the reasons I like the Yamaha as well. The, the Yamaha 871 also has a seven inch bell. And I think what that does is when everything else is designed properly, it does give you a little bit more presence with the sound. It helps to blend a little bit better, I think with a little bit larger ensemble. I have a, a Kunal and Hoyer slow car model alto um, that I've had since my undergrad days. And I absolutely love it, but it is such a light playing instrument. It's beautiful for playing period music, but the problem is if I'm trying to play it in any type of modern ensemble setting, even if we're doing, you know, late classical to early romantic works, but it's not a period chamber sized orchestra, a lot of times I just have issues getting enough power and presence from it to really blend with any type of modern section. I think that, again, I think the Yamaha does this well. I really like what ours does as well. I think it does give a little bit more presence, but it still keeps a lot of that alto character to it. Um, and again, the, you know, I, I think part of that, we've got the all nickel silver hand slide. Again, that's very, very common with altos. I really like that because I think that does give just a little bit more front to the articulation, just a little more immediacy to the sound, but without getting too light. Again, you know, nickel silver, when we put it down here, it does tend to give us a little bit more impact. It can often maybe brighten the sound a little bit, but a lot of times I find it gives it a little bit different presence in the core of the sound. And I think this balance works really well, especially with the the addition of the gold brass tuning slide here. Um, this is something obviously players have been doing for a very, very long time. Um, we're seeing some of my personal favorite models out there. For example, the, the SE Shires Alessi models, um, which are a personal favorite of mine, are using the same thing, yellow brass, gold brass. And what that does for me is it softens up the response just a touch. It doesn't broaden, it doesn't really diffuse a lot of the impact, but it does give it just a slightly different weight. And it does, I think, give the instrument just a little more complex complexity in the sound. It changes up the overtone distribution just a little bit in a really, really nice way that I think fits this instrument really, really well. And again, I, you know, I'm a little bit biased because I've been so involved in the development, but I really, really do enjoy how this instrument plays. I think it's exceptionally responsive all the way up to the, you know, the eighth partial E flat and frankly beyond. Um, I think that I'm able to get, uh, you know, again, that, that nice pinpoint accuracy on the articulation that I want to have, uh, whether it's something like the Albrechts burger or something else very, very, you know, period appropriate. But at the same time, when I'm thinking something just slightly broader in some of our orchestral excerpt settings, I feel like I'm able to get that kind of broadness and I'm able to really blow through it without it getting the sound compacting and starting to get really, really, you know, edgy and shrill almost as 
sometimes, frankly, like with my, my Kun und Hoyer, sometimes when I push it, it does get just overly brilliant. I think this does balance that really, really nicely. The intonation, I think, works really well all the way through. That's one thing that a lot of the folks we've been working with on this model have commented on is how well everything slots. The intonation feels really, really solid, um, and which is great. I think that's something that, frankly, has evolved a lot over the past 20 plus years with alto development. Anyways, just how much better the intonation, where the partials are sitting in the overall intonation throughout the positions are sitting. I think we've gotten better and better with all of that. And I, I think we managed to capture a lot of that with this instrument as well. So again, I, I really, really enjoy playing this. And I, I love the idea again of, you know, just us as a, as a shop, as a resource, being able to have an instrument out there that there are not a lot of really great options for, for that particular market. You know, again, if you know, you're somebody who you're looking for a high end, you know, orchestral, level alto to do some very, very serious playing with. This isn't necessarily designed to do that. I think it can do some of that, but there are other options that are frankly are going to, you know, maybe be at least as good, if not better options for that very, very high end player. But if you're not looking at spending that two, three, four K, I think this does a wonderful job. It's one of those instruments I talk about where it plays above its price. I think that's really where we've tried to price it at, where you know we have it at one level, it probably, ideally, probably could be more, but we want to keep it accessible for players to really be able to experience the alto, to get the, the experience that I really love in playing the alto myself. So as always, I hope you enjoy the video. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, comments about what I talked about here, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. I or other members of our community would love to interact, engage with you. And of course you can check out all of the other videos on our channel, whether it's about our other Lake City products, our uh, Lake City Flugabone, or some of the other projects I'll be coming up with information on in the short term future here, or any of our other hundreds of videos at this point, to take a look there. Um, think about giving this video a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to our channel. And of course, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. So as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>